I've always believed that the home is where your values are developed and where your real life is. It's just thrilling to me that the university has been able to change and fulfill the needs that are out in our community today. It's about people, families, and community. That's it, and that's what we're involved with day in and day out. Home economics goes back a long way. Long ago, before the department was in this building, domestic science, that's what they called it then, was taught by the lady principal in the basement of Old Main. And women students lived in the women's building where the reasonable rules for the development of the ideal of womanhood were strictly enforced. Can you imagine living in a house with 40 women students, the dean of women, and also going to all your classes in the same building. By the 1930s, increasing enrollment required a change of space and building. And the Department of Home Economics moved into the newly constructed Home Economics building on the mall. I enrolled at Penn State in 1949 as freshman. That was the first year they had freshman women on the campus after the war. And uh, they had 500 freshman women, but no freshman men. So we all learned to know each other very well. There were many specialties in, in home ec. You could be in dietetics or you could be in child development. They had courses that were aimed more at, at commercial food, like the, the hotel management. Back then we had uh, home management houses that you lived in for a half a semester a year where you actually learned how to run home. And, and we even had babies in those homes that we had to take care of. It was, it was quite an education. I came to Penn State in 1949, the fall of 1949. I ended up teaching almost every course in the department from meal planning to the advanced nutrition lab and everything in between, or almost everything in between. The favorite part to me was that it, I had to keep up with the scientific <laughs> developments and also the interaction with uh, faculty members who were very involved in research. It was a very stimulating environment to be working in. I came in 1962, and at the time that I started out, it was kind of a, a growing area, you know, so that it was, there was the excitement of being in the new area and developing new programs. What I did was to teach mostly courses in family economics. They did a lot of uh, making of schedules and planning the use of money and that kind of thing. I think a lot of people thought that home economics was strictly cooking and sewing and you didn't have to take all the sciences and they didn't realize how hard the program was and how many courses you had to take. In fact, if I had three more credits in chemistry, I would have been certified to teach chemistry and I made sure I didn't get those three extra credits. We took courses all over the university. Uh, there was not a business school then, uh, okay? But we took, all, we took all the business courses. We took accounting, uh, we took business statistics. But we also took um, the courses in home economics in, re in relationship to food preparation, sanitation, and so forth. Sometimes uh, when you're a student, um, you, you're not particularly pleased or, or you think, why are we doing this? Or where does this fit into the picture? But later on, you find, oh, now I know why we had to do that and why it was important that we did that. Penn State has a tremendous legacy in home economics. And unlike some universities that have tried to ignore that past, we embrace it here. It provided the foundation for what today is the top college of its kind in the United States. What you see is that the nature of the students, 
although generations change, the nature of the person that is a student here at the school hasn't changed. Our student is still just as they were 60, 70 years ago, you know, service oriented. Right? They enjoy serving others. Right? They understand that they work hard when others play. Even though human development and family studies isn't called home economics, there's still a lot of carryover, a lot of continuity from um, home economics days. For example, in the work that Susan McHale and I are doing with school-aged children and their parents, we're collecting a lot of information on how family members use their time. That tradition really began in home economics. Some of the threads that have continued to go through the School of Home Economics, of course, my own favorite is, is child development. And they have the, the new child care center, the Bennett Center, the nursery school, as we called it then, where they teach how to, to teach little children. It's, it's just wonderful to see how it has developed all over the years. I feel like I've learned a lot being here. Like, I feel like I'm actually trained and I could do this on a daily basis. And knowing that they think I'm good at what I do and knowing that parents think I'm good at what I do has given me the confidence to know that I can go on beyond this if I want to, working with kids. I certainly feel very strong ties to the roots from home economics. I mean, after all, my lab is a kitchen. My staff, um, one of their main skills is cooking and presenting food. I think what we do is actually pretty closely related to what home economics used to be because we're trying to get people to um, change their eating behavior through you know, changing their diet. And I think um, if people have the skills in order to, you know, skills to cook and skills to prepare food, um, they can take what we're learning in the lab and apply it themselves. We are part of, of a large university with an incredible heritage. We are part of a large college that has grown out of home economics. And we couldn't be where we are if it weren't for all of those people that preceded us over the past 100 years.